methods. In this video, I'm going to explain methods. A method is a block of code that is executed whenever it is called upon. For example, when we begin our program and execute it, we begin by calling the main method. That's where we've been writing a majority of our code. So anything within this set of curly braces belongs to this main method. This time, we're going to create our own method that we can call whenever we need it. So outside of our main method, make sure you don't write this within the main method, we're going to create a, another method, perhaps a method that will display a message such as hello. And to begin creating a method, we'll need a return type. I'll explain return types later on in this video. For now, we're going to list the word void, followed by a method name. Our main method is called main, and a common naming convention for methods is to have the first letter lowercase. So let's create a method called hello. When we call this method, it will display a message such as hello. So this will be hello with a lowercase h, then we need a set of parentheses, and then a set of curly braces. Anything within the set of curly braces belongs to the hello method. And if we call the hello method, it's going to perform whatever code is between these two curly braces. So what would we like to do when we call this method? Let's display a message such as hello. Now within our main method, we can call, also known as invoking this method. So within our main method, we can call the hello method whenever we want. Now we have just one issue that we need to take care of, and let me explain. We cannot make a static reference to the non-static method hello from the type main. So this means that we need to precede this method with the keyword of static, because we're calling the hello method from a static method of main right here. So normally we do not need to add this keyword of static. And if you want to learn more about things that are static, I do have a video on it. Um, but for now, we just need to add this keyword in order for this program to work for this example. So when we call the hello method, it's going to perform whatever is within our block of code. And here it just displays the word hello. And we can call this method whenever we want and however many times we want. So if we want to display the word hello three times, we can just call the method three separate times. And this method will perform its task its block of code, however many times it is called. One feature available to methods is that we can pass a value or a variable to a method when we call it. For example, we can pass a string variable to represent a name, and then we can use that name for something within our block of code. So for example, let's pass in a name of whatever your name is, let's say bro. We can pass in a value or a variable. So for this example, I'm going to pass in a variable called name. String name equals bro, and I'm going to pass my variable of name into my method. So if you want to pass a value or a variable to a method, when you call that method, within the parentheses, just list all of the values that you would like to pass to your method. The values or variables that you're sending to a method are known as arguments, and they can be confused with what's known as parameters. In order to pass some values or variables to a method, when we declare our method, we need a matching set of what's known as parameters. Think of these as the rules. In order to call this method, we need a matching set of arguments and parameters. Currently, these are not matching. We're passing in a string, but there is no matching parameter. So this is how to set up a parameter for a method. We're first going to begin by listing the data type of the value that our method is expecting. So we're passing in a string as an argument. So we need a string parameter. So we need to first list the data type followed by a name for this value. Just to make it simple, I'm going to call this name. So we now have a matching set of arguments and parameters. And now since we're passing in our name variable to our method of hello, our hello method now has access to a string variable of name, and it contains this value of bro. So now we can use this name for something. Let's display hello plus name. And when we call this method and pass in our name, it's going to display the word hello plus our name, hello bro. So with parameters, you don't necessarily need to keep the names of the values consistent. I could change this name to something else, like uh, title, I guess. And then I will switch that around, and this will work just the same. 
So these don't necessarily have to be called the same thing, the argument and the parameter. You can change the name if you want. Even something like this would work too. I don't know why you would write it like that, but you can. So with methods, you can pass in more than one argument as long as you have a matching set of parameters. This time, let's pass in an integer value. Let's create an integer variable called age. Int age equals, and I'll set this to 21 this time. So within my hello method, I'm going to pass in my name and age as arguments to my hello method. However, we have a problem. If I attempt to run this, we do not have a matching set of arguments, name and age, and parameters. We're passing in a string and an integer, and our method has parameters set up to accept only a string. So we need to finish setting up the parameters for this hello method so that the arguments and parameters match. So we need an integer, and we will call this age, and then we can use this age variable for something. So within another print line statement, let's display u r plus age. And now this will work because we have a matching set of arguments and parameters. And before we finish this video, I would like to explain return types. We can return a value back to the area in which we called a method. So for this example on return types, I think this can be best explained with a separate example. So I'm going to clear out all of this and create a new example. Let's say we have two integer values, int x, this will equal maybe three, and int y, this will equal four. Well, let's create a method that will add these two numbers and return the sum, the result of these two numbers. So outside of the main method, let's declare a method static. Normally we would type void if we're not returning anything, but if we're going to be returning a value, we need to list the data type of the value that we're returning. If we're going to add two integers together and return the sum, we're going to list the return type as integer because that's the data type of the value that we would like to return. We would like to return an integer and then we will list the method name. Let's call this add parentheses and then a set of curly braces. So we cannot normally finish compiling this because if we're listing a return type, we need to list a return statement. What do we want to return? Well, we're going to return an integer, but we'll have to get to that later. So let's begin by setting up the parameters for our add method. Let's say we would like an integer, let's call this x, and int y. So in order to call the add method, we need to pass in two arguments, two integers. So let's call the add method and pass in our variables x and y. And within the add method, we will add these two numbers together. We could store this within a separate variable, int z equals x plus y. And then we could return our value of z. So when we run this, what's gonna happen? Well, it doesn't display anything. That's because when we return the value of z to this area in which we called our method, well, we're not currently doing anything with this value. So we could store this within a variable or display it directly to the console window. So let's store the sum within int z. Int z equals add x and y. So you may have noticed that we declared this variable twice, int z within our main method and within our add method. This is technically legal because they are known as what's called local variables. Int z is only recognized by anything within the immediate set of curly braces. It's known as a local variable. Our add method does not recognize this int variable of z, so we could declare our own to use, or you can rename it too. It doesn't really matter what you do. So we can store the sum of our add method within int z, and then do something with it, such as display it to the console window, line z. So this will display the sum of seven. Another way in which you could write this, we don't necessarily need to store the value in which we're returning to a variable. We could just directly display it to the console window too. So within my print line, I'm going to call the add method and pass in X and Y, and this will still display seven. Another way in which we could shorten our method is that we don't need to store the sum within a variable. We could just return x plus y. 
So let me clear this line and we could return x plus y and this would be valid too. So that's another way of writing this. Well, everybody, those are methods. They are really just a block of code that is executed whenever it is called upon. You can pass in values or variables known as arguments, but in order to do so, your method, when you declare it, needs a matching set of parameters. And then you could return a value if you need to. Instead of using the word void, just list the data type of the value that you're returning. Let's discuss overloaded methods. Overloaded methods are methods that share the same name, but they have different parameters. This is allowed because each method needs its own unique method signature. That is the method's name plus its parameters. They can share the same name, but they would need different parameters to give them each a unique method signature. Let's create a few overloaded methods, perhaps just a few add methods that will add some numbers together. Outside of our main method, let's declare a few overloaded methods. So for this example, we'll need these to be static. Let's return an integer. So the return type is going to be int, and this will be called add. And we will accept a few arguments. So we need to set up some corresponding parameters. Let's say int a and int b. And we will return the sum return a plus b. So let's create another method, an overloaded method, also called add. Wait a minute, we have a problem. So we have two methods that are duplicates. Duplicate method add and type main. They both have the same method signature. They both share the same method name as well as the same parameters where they accept two integer values. There are two ways in which we can resolve this. The first is that we can change one of the method names and this error would go away. But that defeats the purpose of overloaded methods. The other way is that we can change the parameters that we have for each method. Let's say we would like two versions, maybe even three versions of our add method. One that accepts two values, another that accepts three values, let's say int c, return a plus b plus c, and another that will accept four values. So we'll have int d, return a plus b plus c plus d. And then our problem went away. So let's test these. I'm just going to add a print line that states which overloaded method we're using. This is overloaded method number one. And I'm going to copy this and paste it. And we'll change the second instance of this print line to this is overloaded method number two. And lastly, this is overloaded method number three. So let's try this. Let's say we have an integer int x equals add, and we can pass in between two and four integers. Now I'm going to attempt to pass in a single integer value, but we cannot run and compile this because we do not have a matching method signature. We can pass in between two and four integers. So let's try this by passing in two arguments this time, two integer values, and then let's display the sum, the result system.out.println, our variable of x. So we end up using our first overloaded method. This is overloaded method number one, and this will display the sum a plus b, which is three. And let's try and use our second overloaded method. We need to pass in three integer values as arguments, and we are now using our second overloaded method. And lastly, we can pass in four integer values and we end up using our third overloaded method and we get a sum of 10. And with overloaded methods, not only are the numbers of parameters taken into account, but the data type for each specific parameter. So this time let's create three more add methods, but these ones will accept double values instead of integers. So let's change any instance of int to double, including the return type. All right, and then I'm going to change the number of the overloaded method that we're using. So six, five, four, three, two, one. Our first three methods only accept integers and they will accept between two and four integers. Our next three add methods only accept double values and they accept between two and four double values. So we could also pass in some double values to our overloaded methods. Let's change these to 
1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. And we will need to change the data type of our variable x as well. So double x add 1.0 through 4.0. And we are now using overloaded method number six, which accepts four double arguments. In summary, overloaded methods are methods that share the same name but have different parameters. They can share the same name, but they would need different parameters to give each method a unique method signature. Some factors that are taken into account with parameters are the number of parameters, the data type, and the order of the values. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like it, then press the like button. Share it with your friends or anyone who wants to make his career in Java. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comment section is all yours. This is the 10th part of this series. For more parts from this series, subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.